Hey Savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here and today we'll be going through how to install the new release of Fedora Workstation, Fedora 31. And these instructions are going to be very similar for the server version as well if you want to download that. So the first place we're going to go to is the getfedora.org website where we can get Fedora 31 as you can see on the right hand side, Fedora 31 released. And we'll scroll down a little bit. We'll first download Fedora Workstation, then I'll explain how to flash it on a disk. We'll boot that disk and finally run through how to install it on an empty storage space of your choice. Today I'd actually like to try the Fedora Media Writer. So we'll hit the download now, it's directly on their home page. And then you have two options, you can download the ISO file or you can download their Fedora Media Writer. So I've never tried this before but it can download an image directly and create a bootable disk right away. So after this download is finished, we'll make sure to flash the disk onto the writer. Go ahead and select whatever operating system you are using to go ahead and go ahead and select whatever operating system you're using in order to flash the disk. So I'm using a Mac here. You can also download it for Windows as well. As you can see, that was a quick download. Let's go ahead and open that app up. And after it opens up here, we'll go ahead and select what kind of image we want. So I was talking about Fedora Workstation 31. That's the image that I want to download and flash onto my USB stick. So I'll go ahead and select this version. You can also select the Fedora 31 Server Edition, but I want to try out the workstation. And after this, you'll see a page that kind of tells you a little bit about Fedora Workstation and what it's good for. As you can see here, it says it's reliable, user-friendly, and a powerful operating system for your laptop or desktop computer. So let's go ahead and create a live USB. And at this point, it's asking you to go ahead and put a USB stick in or some kind of disk media. So I'm going to insert my USB real quick. It should just pop up here. Ignore for me. And then it says right here, the SanDisk Cruiser Glide which is a 16 gig USB is now available. And if you have multiple USB sticks inside your computer, you can go ahead and use the drop down to select which, whichever one you want. Go ahead and hit the right disk and it might ask you for administrative password. Go ahead and put that password in and let the flash begin. This might take a while. So if you're new and stopping by to watch a install today, please take a moment to subscribe below and hit the notification bell for more installations in the future. After you flash the disk, you'll take it over to a computer server where you want to install Fedora Workstation on and then insert it. Then you'll have to boot into your BIOS in order to change the settings around and select the newly created bootable disk to boot first. This is usually done by finding the correct key to boot into BIOS for your particular computer, usually one of the F keys like F2 or F10, and then finding the tab usually called boot order and exchanging the order so that the bootable disk is first. After you have that set up, you will we'll save and exit out of your BIOS, and you should see a screen very similar to this after we're done writing. You can select to delete the downloaded image at this point, or close out of this, which I'll just close out because I want to save the downloaded ISO to my computer so I can use it. But at this point, you are set to take your USB, CD, or DVD over to the computer where you want to install Fedora Workstation 31 on. And if you did everything correctly, you'll get a screen similar to this. Let's go ahead and start Fedora Workstation Live 31 by selecting the first option and pressing enter. I really did enjoy using the Fedora Writer in order to create this bootable disk. It's uh, very easy to use. It downloads the ISO for you and automatically flashes it for you. So it's a great tool to use. You can, of course, use other tools like Belena Etcher or UNet Bootin if you want. I will put a link in the description below in order to use the other two. And in that case, you'll make sure to download a ISO by yourself. And once things boot up, you'll have two options here, either to try Fedora on the live disk or to install to a hard drive of your choice. We're going to select the second option and select to install it on a hard drive of our choice. And if you went ahead and made it this far, please hit the like button. It really does help me out. The first thing it's asking for is what language you want to use during the installation process. 
English is fine for me, so I'm going to select that and hit continue. Next we get a few other options, our time and date, we can select that and select a zone here. So I'm just going to select uh, Los Angeles is fine for me today. And you can also select whether or not you want to toggle the network time on or off. This will sync you up with the time that's and up here you can toggle on and off the network time if you so choose to do so. And up here on the right you can go ahead and select whether or not to toggle the network time on or off. I'm going to keep that on and hit done. And then you're going to select your installation destination. Go ahead and click on that. You will see any storage disks that you have available for the installer. You can also add network disks if you need to and uh, then select what kind of co storage configuration you want to have an automatic configuration a custom configuration or a custom advanced configuration you can also select whether or not you want to encrypt your ssd or hard drive and you will be asked for a password in order to encrypt the drive and you'll be asked for that password every time you log in. If you have more than one drive they will be listed here. Make sure to select the proper drive because all the information on that drive will be deleted and it will be overwritten by the Fedora Workstation 31 platform. So you want to make sure that you're using a SSD or hard drive that has nothing on it and after you've confirmed that you can go ahead and hit the done up top. It will save the storage configuration and then we will be able to begin the installation. And we'll do this by going ahead and selecting the begin installation button here on the bottom right. Go ahead and hit that. And as you can see, the installation is now in progress, so give it a few moments here. Fedora OS is an independent distribution that Red Hat owns. And Red Hat is very known in the server space for its stability which is one of the key features of Fedora as well, and very good for people migrating with older hardware. And once the installation is complete, it will tell you that it's successfully installed at the bottom here. And it will tell you that the progress is complete here in the middle. So we are ready to go ahead and finish our installation and boot into our freshly installed Fedora 31 workstation desktop. So go ahead, hit the finish installation. You'll want to make sure while rebooting to go ahead and remove any installation media that you may have so you don't boot back into the live image of the system or you'll have to reboot once again to get to your newly installed system. And it looks like Fedora is forcing us to go ahead and restart by ourselves. So go ahead to the top right corner, select the little power icon and go ahead and power off your computer and then remove that installation media and power it back on. Give it a few moments here while the system is booting back up. And once you are in your newly installed workstation, you'll be welcomed by this screen here. Go ahead, hit next. It's going just to ask you a few questions while it's setting up the system further. So if you want location services on and automatic problem reporting on, you can go ahead and select them here. I'm going to select both of them to be off here and then I'll hit next. And if you have any online accounts you'd like to tether with this Fedora install, you can do it here or skip. I'll skip. Go ahead and tell it about you. So my name is Savvy Nick and the username I want to use is Savvy Nick as well. Go ahead and hit next once you're ready. Then put in a password for that user that you're creating. So I'll put my password in here and hit next after you have your password and have confirmed it. And once you have all that in, you'll be ready to start using Fedora. Go ahead and hit the button. 
And once you're in your newly created Fedora Workstation 31 desktop, you'll get the Getting Started dialog, which allows you to look through a couple tasks that they have and tells you about how you can do various things. We'll go ahead and exit out of here and I'll go ahead and walk you through. I'd like to congratulate you on your newly installed Fedora OS 31 workstation. Let's go ahead and look around a little bit. As you can see, the background is uh, quite bright. You have Fedora in the bottom right. There's really not much going on here. You can't highlight the background or anything. And I don't believe you can even put anything on the background if you wanted to. Uh, such as icons and files. Instead, they have to be accessed through the file manager and all your other directories. On the top left corner, you have activities, which allow you to go ahead and get your doc, as well as uh, workspaces that you might have open. And the default uh, browser here is Firefox. You also have Rhythmbox, their files or their file manager, as well as an app store. And then if you hit this little dotted array here, you can get uh, the rest of the pre-installed applications of Fedora 31. Fedora 31 uses GNOME as their default desktop. And if you click out of the activities in the middle, you can see the time and date. And at the far right side, you see the current connected network and the settings for that, the volume, as well as if your computer is charged and what percentage it's at, who's logged in, and if you want to get to settings, lock out the current user, or go ahead, shut down, restart, and all that other fun stuff here on the far right. Well, I hope you enjoyed this installation tutorial of Fedora Workstation 31, and if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please post them below in the comments section. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos, and make sure to like the video. Thanks for watching.